a sacrifice for knowledge. I would like to pose a reminder that Odin made his sacrifice for knowledge. But he didn't seek knowledge just for the sake of knowledge. Process for the sake of process, this isn't Odin. He initiated processes to accomplish results. The result was to obtain knowledge in order to rule. He was tasked with the mission due to the circumstances brought about by Tyr's defeat and his subsequent loss of rights. Odin had to take over the operational reins, and he needed the sacrifice in order to receive the algorithms of governance. For example, in grade school, we learn according to a defined and clear algorithm. Along with us, a large number of children are also learning, and we are all more or less on the same level, on the same starting position. But all of a sudden, something happens when the standard educational process ceases to be viable. It's not that it's not needed or unnecessary, it's just not viable anymore. In this case, a student needs to change him or herself in order to exit the standard algorithm. Before Odin became the chief god, it was like grade school. We could afford to study without much effort and according to a common algorithm that was being offered to everyone. But then suddenly something happened to the school. The school burned down. There is no more school. Now everyone must study on their own. And it requires switching to a different format of learning, where speed is more important and the results have greater value. Studying the old way is no more possible. And this is when a sacrifice is needed. We always sacrifice something when we need to go against a standard algorithm. When we need to not be like everyone else when we need to accept a mission and conform to the mission. It always requires a sacrifice. Here we're dealing with this exact case. In essence, what you're doing now, all runists and all students of the school, we all in our own way are making a sacrifice. For knowledge, you sacrifice your free time. For knowledge, you sacrifice your right to be like everyone else. For knowledge, you sacrifice your right to not be held accountable from the viewpoint of the higher power. You sacrifice your right to be ignorant. You sacrifice a lot for knowledge, essentially recreating that same path. It is a matter of the value held by the sacrifice. The degree to which you value the sacrifice will determine the value of the result. This is what Odin showed us. He sacrificed himself without any doubt. He sacrificed his ability to see like everyone else, to be like everyone else. He gave up his eye for the right to drink from Mimir's well. He partook in activities which he would have been condemned for had he not been the head of the pantheon. For example, he was learning witchcraft from Freya. The legends tell us about that. Freya learned magic from Odin, and Odin learned witchcraft from Freya with the understanding that since he is the All-Father, since he is the all-encompassing deity, he must be knowledgeable in every subject. He cannot say, witchcraft is below me, I won't be doing it. Witchcraft is a female practice and I'm a man after all. I can't do that. Instead, he says, well, yes, since this exists in the world, how could I not study it? How could I deny this dimension of the world? It would mean to deny a dimension of myself. This is exactly what Odin teaches us. And the system of the Nine Worlds also shows us that it's not all rainbows and unicorns there. There are also negative moments there, but without the negative aspects there won't be any positive ones, there will be no victory. Because they teach, they help. They are there to lean on in order to move forward. What can a person lean on to start moving forward? On his or her own mistakes. Mistakes are the greatest resource to a person. Lean on your mistakes. Can you lean on hope? Yes, but you will fall. 
What is more real in a person's life than his or her mistakes? Even successes aren't as real. Wouldn't you agree?